Welcome back to Forgotten Treasure. Today we're going to be going over how to do resin embedding. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to take an artifact that you found and embed it in a clear crystalline resin so that way you can uh, protect and preserve your artifact and display it without risk of it deteriorating or oxidizing further. Now what we're going to need for the, this process is you're going to need a liquid resin. Um, I've been using Captain, Cast and Craft polyester casting resin and it comes with a catalyst that's going to help the resin harden. <coughs> In addition to this you're going to need a pair of uh, rubber gloves because you do not want to get any of this stuff on your hands. You're going to need a, a silicone mold. This is going to allow you to cast the resin and let it cure without it sticking to anything. You're going to need a silicon uh, spatula. This is going to allow you to do is work with the resin and uh, smear it on your artifacts without getting it on your hands or anything like that. You're going to need a couple graduated cylinders. I recommend using silicon ones if you can get your hands on them. Um, you're going to need at least one per each layer of resin you plan on pouring. You do not want to use plastic or styrofoam in this process because the resin will melt both of those and it'll make a huge toxic mess. You're also going to want a couple popsicle sticks. These are good stirrers for your resin and allow you to work with things. And then after that, you're just going to need whatever it is you want to embed. Today we're going to be using these two shotgun shell brass. We're going to be putting them in here, letting it cure, and we're going to make a nice little coaster out of it. All right, it's time to mix our resin. What we're gonna do is you're gonna start by pouring as much resin as you need for your current layer into the cup. I typically like to over measure here a little bit to make sure I have enough for the mold, but please keep in mind that whatever resin that you pour, once you've added catalyst to it, um, cannot be reused later. And after uh, you start pouring, any excess does need to be uh, cured out and then discarded. So now it's gonna be time to add our catalyst. You're going to add catalyst um, on a ratio of drops per ounce of resin. Um, the exact ratio you're going to need is going to vary pretty drastically by a number of factors, <coughs> including uh, temperature, humidity levels, what layer resin you are working on, um, a couple other factors. I'll include a document in the case notes below that will have um, mixing ratios and recommended instructions. At this point, it's time to mix. So you're gonna start from the center. You're gonna mix pretty thoroughly, working your way out to the sides. Make sure you scrape with the sides, you scrape the bottom, and you're just gonna work this to a nice homogenous mixture. As you mix it, you'll start to see um, different layers form in the resin there. And once you are fully mixed, those will start to go away and you'll be left with a nice homogenous mixture. Once you get to that point, your resin is ready to pour and you are good to go. All right, now that we have our resin mix, it's time to form the base layer, which will also be the gel layer that we use for the embedding. Go ahead and pour your resin in slowly, starting in the center of the mold and add as much as you need to form the layer that's the right thickness that you're looking for. Make sure to fill it out fully. Make sure all the corners are filled. You get a nice, even layer. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna come back and check for our gel layer. We're gonna take a popsicle stick and we're gonna poke the top corner a little bit. And we can see right here, it's still a little tacky. It's still runny. What we're looking for is a nice, consistent, jello-like consistency. So we're gonna come back and check again in about another 10 minutes. All right, we're checking this again. It's been another 10 minutes. And we're gonna poke it and, yeah, but it's still a little tacky there. Well, you can see that it's firmed up quite a bit. You can feel that it's nice and dense. So that means we got a good gel layer going. And by the time we go ahead and mix up the next batch of res resin, this should be good to go. All right, so here we are again. We've got our gel layer nice and formed. We got a new batch of resin and our artifacts. What we're gonna do is you're gonna pour a light layer down onto that, that current gel layer. That's it's gonna do is gonna make a nice uh, sticky surface for your objects to bond into and help them uh, fill out and not form air bubbles as easily. What you're gonna to wanna to do from here is you're gonna to wanna to take your artifact and take your silicone uh, spatula and just rub a little bit on all surfaces of 
your artifact. What that's gonna do is when, allow it for when you drop it in, it's gonna help it uh, get a nice solid bond all around it, prevent air bubbles from sticking to your artifact and make it just the final product look neater. So go ahead and drop your artifacts in. And then at this point, you can take a little spatula or a stick and move them around, adjust them to the point where you want them to sit in the mold. And once you got them there, it's time to go ahead and pour your resin over. Go ahead and start from the center. Make sure you fully cover all of the artifacts and fill the mold up all the way. Once you get to that point, you should be good to go. Um, you can see the bubbles are gonna start to fill out, rise to the top. And at this point, um, the only thing left to do is let it sit. Curing times are going to vary depending on your climate environment. But generally speaking, I do this in the evening and then just let them sit overnight. And they're usually good by morning. All right, guys, here we are after this is sat and cured. As you can see around the edges here, it is starting to pull away from the silicone mold. That is a sign that your resin has cured and has uh, fully set. So all you gotta do is just slowly lift it out. All right, and there we are. Um, we have our two shells embedded in the resin. You got a nice clear finish, got a few air bubbles on the back. Um, sometimes that's just a little inevitable. Uh, most of the tackiness is gone here. But what you can do is at this stage, after you're done, there is a, something called a finishing spray. I don't have it with me right now, but you can basically, it's a spray bottle and you just uh, spray that on and it helps seal it in, it can eliminate tackiness, any fingerprints that get left behind. And you have the option to uh, polish this up and file it down, buff it out as you see fit. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and you guys take this knowledge and make some awesome embedments yourself. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. I hope to see you again soon.